Hi guys. All right. In today's recording, I'll be telling you why Selenium WebDriver replaced Selenium RC. So I'll just go through the slide first. Selenium RC was the first tool of Selenium suite, and I'm sure you all must be aware of that. Single host origin policy issue. So there was this issue which made WebDriver replace Selenium RC, and of course WebDriver is much faster than RC. So we'll understand these things today in this recording. I'll take you to Notepad here. So I'm going to cover what is single host origin policy or same ori origin policy, remote controls architecture and web drivers architecture. So let's understand what is same origin policy. Now before I tell you about same origin policy, I will take you to a little bit of history of Selenium. Uh, I'm sure you might, might have heard about Jason Huggins. He was the first person to develop Selenium. Okay, now Jason Huggins was a test engineer at ThoughtWorks. Okay, and uh, he was working on an application whose testing was becoming more and more ine inefficient. So what he did, he created a JavaScript program. All right. Why did he create a JavaScript program? Because he wanted to control the browser's actions. Uh, now you might ask me that how can a JavaScript control browser's actions? Then for that you need to understand what is JavaScript. So go back and understand what is JavaScript. I'll tell you a little bit about it. Okay. Now um, I'm sure you know what is HTML and every HTML has some JavaScript statements. So these JavaScript statements are nothing but instructions that are to be executed by the web browser. Okay, I'll keep writing the keywords here so that you don't miss out on any. So I'm talking about JavaScript right now. Okay, he created a JavaScript program because he wanted to control the browser's actions. And we have JavaScript and HTML so that we can give instructions to the web browser. Okay, I'll just write it down here to provide instructions to the web browser. Okay, fine. Um, and if you're not aware, JavaScript is one of the core technologies of worldwide web content production. So what do I mean by this? Whatever you see on a web page, there are majorly three things. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay. What are they? HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, fine. All right. Now, all modern web browsers, I'm talking about Chrome, Internet Explorer, you talk about Safari or any other major browsers that anybody uses these days. OK, they support it without the need of any plugin by means of a built in JavaScript engine. OK, and what is this JavaScript engine? It's nothing but a program. You can consider it as a program or you can say that it's an interpreter. OK. So, uh, let's come to same origin policy now because I hope you've got a brief about JavaScript, okay, what it does to the browser. So, JavaScript is actually responsible to give instructions to your web browser. Okay, fine. All right. And how are these instructions interpreted? With the help of a JavaScript engine, which is inbuilt inside the web browser okay these days every browser supports javascript by default without the help of any plugin okay let's now understand what is same origin policy or single host origin policy okay same origin policy listen to this carefully what it does is it prohibits okay it prohibits javascript javascript from accessing elements from a domain that is different from where it was launched. So what is it? It is basically a security measure. Okay, the single host origin policy is nothing but a security measure. Okay, which is used in programming languages like JavaScript and Ajax so that you can protect the confidentiality and integrity of the information. What it does, it prevents a website scripts from accessing and interacting with scripts used on the other sites. Listen to this carefully. What did I say? I said that it prevents a website's scripts. Okay, by scripts, I mean JavaScripts from accessing and interacting with scripts used on other sites. What do they do? 
they actually control the browser's actions. So what am I saying here is single host origin policy will prohibit any JavaScript to communicate with any other JavaScript on some other domain. Okay, I'll give you an example. Let's say you're working on google.com right now. All right, and you're working on mail, Gmail, let's say. Now, you're working on google.com as a domain. Now, if you want to access anything else, any other page on Google, you have all the right to do so. You can call any JavaScript within this domain. However, if you will try to access a JavaScript which is on, let's say, yahoo.in, you can't do so. Okay, because that's against the same origin policy. A JavaScript cannot access or cannot communicate with any other JavaScript which is present on some other domain other than from where it was launched. Okay, so I've opened up Google here. Okay, and I'm going to inspect this page. So I have this plugin called Firebug. Don't worry about it. We're going to talk about plugins and how to inspect elements in detail. All right. So here, let's say I'll just scroll down the page and I want to inspect this element. Okay, the search bar. All right. Now, that's the element. Okay, which is this one which has got inspected. This is the HTML code corresponding to this web element on this web page. Now, I just want to show you that there are scripts being called from here. Okay, if you can see here, there's one script. If you can see there's a function and we're calling a search form. All right, and there will be other scripts as well. So what I mean to say here is that this script cannot access or cannot communicate a script JavaScript which is on yahoo.co.in or yahoo.com let's say I'm opening yahoo.com okay now you can't access the script present on this page however if you go to Google's some other page but it has to be on the same domain google.co.in or google.com so if I'm going to Gmail or if I'm going to apps that is quite possible but if you go to Yahoo if you want to go to Yahoo and you know control the page you can't do that because for security reasons that's just prohibited that's what I wanted to make you understand. So now let's come back to what I was telling you about Jason Huggins. So he created a JavaScript program. All right. Uh, and later he what he did, he thought that the script has a potential to control browsers actions. Let me make it open source. So he made the script open source and he named it as Selenium Core. So Selenium Core was the first thing that came into existence as a selenium as selenium okay and what was it it was a javascript program but it had the same origin policy issue why because testers were supposed to install this selenium core and the web server containing the web application to be tested on the same system they were supposed to download and install everything now that was not feasible all the time that testers would install the complete web server carrying the web application under test and of course your selenium core inside the browser so this was the reason why your selenium rc came into existence okay single host origin policy was the reason why rc came into existence so there was another thoughtworks engineer he, whose name was paul Heymond. what he did is he decided to create a server okay that will act as an http proxy to trick the browser into believing that selenium core and the web application under test come from the same domain what he did he created a program a server what is a server server is nothing but let's say a jar it was actually a jar it's nothing but a jar all right a standalone application so why did he create this because he wanted to create an http proxy why did he want to create an http proxy because he wanted to hack the system how by injecting an HTTP proxy into the browser so that the browser believes that Selenium Core and the web application being tested they come from the same domain okay 
I'm telling you about the HTTP proxy thing. Okay, fine. To avoid this same origin policy, what he used, he used the proxy injection method. What is it? In proxy injection method, the serv server, the Selenium server, which is a jar actually, okay, it acts as a client configured HTTP proxy. And this proxy will do nothing but sit between the browser and the application under test and then mask the application under test under a, fi under a fictional URL. I hope you understand this. So what it means is you've got your application under test okay and you've got your browser. So what this HTTP proxy or this server this uh, Selenium server will do it will make a proxy sit between these two okay so that what will what will it do it will mask the application under test under a, under a fictional URL so that your browser understands okay fine both selenium core and your application under test they are from the same domain so this was how they were hacking the system by creating this remote control okay now since we have since I have introduced this was what remote control was let's understand its architecture now okay so I'm at this point now Let's understand remote control's architecture. So remote control majorly consists of two things. First, the server. Okay, I'll just write server. And the second thing it consists of is the client libraries. Okay. And to make you understand this thing, what I'll do, I'll take you to a diagram. And this is what I've created for my students. Okay, this is a document which I generally share with my student. And this image has been taken from seleniumhq.org because that's the trusted document. And you can refer, refer to it anytime. Okay, so this is the diagram right in front of you. Okay, let's understand this. So you've got the script. Okay understand them as client libraries actually okay they can be written in or they can be related to java ruby python perl php or dot net anything then you've got this remote control server okay and then you've got application under test running on different browsers so the choice is yours which you want to use you want to use safari chrome firefox internet explorer or whatever so what happens here is these client libraries okay can you see here these client libraries they communicate with the server this server okay passing each selenium command for execution okay I missed one point now before they communicate with the server here you are actually supposed to launch the server first okay you're supposed to launch the server now you will ask me now how shall we launch it if you remember I just mentioned that it's nothing but a jar so you're basically running a jar you open a command prompt and start running a jar okay that's how you will start the server so you're supposed to start the server first okay and then your client libraries will communicate with the server so this RC server here it's nothing back but actually a middleman between your commands here sending through these scripts and your browser okay it's a middleman now when you begin the testing what this RC server does is this will inject the selenium core remember the JavaScript program so it will inject this JavaScript program into the browser okay now once injected the score will start receiving instructions relayed by the RC server from a test program now when instructions are received core will execute them as JavaScript commands so core will basically pass these commands to your browser alright where your application under test is running okay now it will obey the instructions and will relay the uh, response to the RC server now RC server will receive the response again from the browser and then display the results to you it will again take the next instruction from you through the client uh, uh, libraries again go to core it'll give the instructions to core. core core will give the instructions to your browser where your application and test is running and then again get back the response and then show the response to you so this keeps happening now let's understand that during this entire process 
you first need to start the Selenium server okay and then of course there's a lot of complicacy into this architecture and then the server will inject this HTTP proxy and the Selenium core into the browser so until you get the response there's a long process happening and that's the reason web driver in terms of uh, giving the response is much faster than your Selenium RC and the second thing is the architecture is less complicated how let's understand okay now I'll take you to the other diagram here okay which again I have taken from some resource now see you you see here there's a web server there's a browser and there's a script here now what happens with your web driver is with web driver you've got browser drivers I hope you're aware of it so you've got Chrome driver you've got Firefox driver you've got Internet Explorer driver so testers are supposed to provide instructions to the browser driver through the script this browser driver is responsible to provide commands to your browser and browser will execute the commands here you don't need any server in between to be started and inject an HTTP proxy neither you need any selenium core the communication is direct there's no middleman there is no third party sitting in between and that's the reason web driver becomes faster than your RC so this is about single host origin policy selenium RC's architecture and the difference between selenium RC's architecture and web drivers architecture this is the basic building block for you okay it's important for you to understand these terms understand the difference if you have any questions I'll be happy to take them up please post the questions thank you bye